いや僕にしかできないんだやろうデスノートで世の中を変えてやる地球の掃除と思って凶悪犯の名前を書き続けた罪を受けて当然な悪人が心臓麻痺で死んでいく裏で道徳のない人間人に迷惑をかける人間 Hey what's up you guys yes I'm Christina from l e a f y l a s t e r and today I want to sit down relax and talk about my wishlist plans In preparation for this video, I did a little bit of research on the interwebs to find a little bit more inspiration for new plants, but I also took a little deep dive into genuses that I already knew I liked to find more similar plants. With this said, let's jump right into it. Inspiration is truly everywhere. If you are on social media, you are bombarded with plants. The only issue with this is. Most of the time, it's the trending plants over and over again, unless you really go out of your way and search for new plants purposefully. Other than that, you can find plant inspiration from friends or family, maybe vacations or trips, from botanical gardens, or just plain plant shops directly. Only thing you need to make sure is take a picture or a note so you don't forget. The list I created today could honestly go on for hours and hours, but There's just so many cool plants out there you could collect, but obviously, you are never going to have them all, which is also the reason I haven't made a wishlist video yet. I always feel like the list is incomplete because, well, it is kind of. There's always plants I'm putting on there or maybe even taking off of it. So, today, I want to share with you all of my wishlist plants as of right now at this point in time. I've got my blanket, some iced coffee, and I've got my list right here. So, since we are all cozied up right now, let's get into the first plant. Number one on the list is kind of random, but it's a cacti. It's the Euphorbia lactea white ghost. I love the look of it. I had my eye on this for like two years now. Still haven't pulled the trigger, still haven't seen it in any shops so far. I am usually not the cacti type of girl. But this one really speaks to me. Moving fast, I want to dive into the first bigger genus of plants that I really like, and this is Hoya. If you watch my videos regularly, you would know that I absolutely adore Hoya. My Hoya collection is still pretty small. I started with some beginner Hoyas to get a feel for them, and then matured into some more intermediate Hoyas, some more special or rare ones. By now, I feel like I have the care more or less down, and I feel like venturing. Even deeper into the Hoya land. <laughs> Number two on the list is the Hoya Sunrise. I would love to have a Hoya that can sun stress a lot. So far, I don't have any kind of Hoya that goes fully sun stress, red or pink. So, I would love to add that to my collection. If you have any Hoya in mind that sun stress really beautifully, let me know. I would very much appreciate it. Number three on my list are veiny Hoyas. So, I would love to have those big leaf veiny Hoyas. For example, Hoya Clemensorium, Hoya Finlaysoniae, Hoya Callistophylla. And maybe the Hoya Meridithii Ted Green. These are all very big, veiny Hoyas, and I love the look of them. If I ever have the chance to get one of those, I will. Number four on the list is the Hoya Wilbur Graves,、um, another really splashy Hoya. I do have some of those already in my collection, and who doesn't love a good splash? Number six is also a splashy Hoya, it's the Hoya Sigillatis. I just think it is super unique looking. There's just something about the leaf shape and the almost cardboard like texture that is really appealing to me. Moving on to the more sickly looking Hoyas. I know a lot of people despise the sick look, but I just feel it's super sexy. So, 
deal with it. Number seven on the list is the Hoya Caudata Sumatra. I feel like it's almost kind of a staple Hoya to get at this point. I feel like I'm the last person to get one. Might just be my social media bubble I'm in, but just feels like it. In addition to this really cool leaf pattern, it also has the most beautiful blooms. I mean, just look at it. Isn't this like divine? I don't know, it looks so fuzzy and just, I don't know, I, I love it. I would love to have one of those. Same thing goes for the next two beauties that I put on number eight of my list. It's the Hoya Undulata and the Hoya Rinciae Borneo. So these have those same sickly looking beautiful leaves in my opinion. So if you feel like I forgot a really cool Hoya, then let me know in the comments. I will gladly expand my wish list. But I think we are done with the Hoyas for now. Let's move on to number nine of the list, which is the Senecio Raulianus Variegata. So the string of pearls Variegata. Such a cool plant. I already love the green one, but I'm almost 1 million percent sure that I would kill this plan. I might just leave it on this list and never buy it, so this doesn't happen, so... Next! Number 10 on the list is the Philodendron D. McDowell. I could replace it with the Philodendron Pestazanum as well. I would love to have one of those big Philodendron that have these really big and like glossy leaves. These can get really big and wide and I absolutely don't have the space for it right now. So before getting this, I would definitely have to move first. Number 11 is kind of a joke to be honest. If I would ever get the chance, I would obviously gladly accept a Philodendron Gloriosum Mycans or Melanochrysum that is variegated. Just imagine you go to the garden center and find a variegated, like, gloriosum or something. Uh, I would just die. I don't know. Crazy. But to get one in real life, you will probably have to sell your soul, all of your belongings, maybe your first son or something. I will probably, like, just pass on it. Next plant on my list is the Anthurium Metallicum. I absolutely adore the shape of the leaves and also the color, which makes it very special, hence why the name. I think it's quite obtainable. I see them sold here and there. Not a ton, but you can get them from private sellers or some well-sorted shops. They are quite pricey still, so it's not really cheap. I'll have to see what I can do about that. Next up, I would love to have one of those dark shaded anthuriums, so maybe a anthurium ace of spades or a anthurium papillanum, you know what I mean. Number 14 on the list is the anthurium microphyllum. I got inspired by Larry from Larry's Jungle. You can check out her Instagram and YouTube right here. She is the only person I ever seen owning this plant. I already love anthurium with long leaves but this one has a little bit more of a rounded shape to it and the texture looks super interesting so I would love to have one of those. There are so many more cool anthuriums with big leaves, long leaves, shiny leaves, rippled leaves. There's just so much variation and if I could I would get them all but they just take up so much space so I really have to be selective about my choices here. Moving on further down the list, we have some begonias. I would love to have a pink begonia for no real reason other than I want something pink. And there are a few that I really liked. For example, the begonia benigo pink, the begonia malacosticta, and most of all the begonia julau. I first saw it in a video from Plant Me Ashley and these are so beautiful, just gorgeous. Chefs, kisses everywhere, all day long. But for some of them, I think I would definitely need some sort of terrarium or at least a prop box to keep them in really good conditions. Next, I would love to have the Begonia Chlorosticta. There are two different forms, I think, but they are both gorgeous. These are quite available, I think, and not even that pricey, so I will probably get one soon. Ugh, I'm so tired. Ugh. 
Another plant I would absolutely love to own one day is the Monstera aurea, large form preferably. <laughs> Ever since getting my Zingonium aurea, I really came to like the yellow variegation, so I would love to have one of those. I feel like they are very available, but they are still really pricey, so it is an investment. Speaking of pricey, the next plant is the Ficus Elastica Shiveriana. It has light leaves with dark speckling on it, and I would just love to add it to my little Ficus collection on my windowsill. You know, gotta catch them all. <laughs> Moving on with a orchid that I have on my list. I typically try to stay away from orchids because I know there are so many different kinds and you can really like go all in on orchids. You know, I just don't want it to escalate because I already have an issue. Anyways, it's the... I have to read this one. <laughs> I don't want to read this one. Oi. <sighs> Oeteoclades spatulifera. It just looks weird. The leaves look like snakes basically. Hence why it is also called the snake orchid. Next big category on my list is the caudiciforms. So plants that have a big cortex or a really like thick stem and then there's greenery on top. I already have a few of those and I'm madly in love with them. I have some here. This is a Philanthus mirabilis and it has this thick potato-y stem and then it gets the cutest little leaves on top. I also have the Stefania Kawasaki here and I also have my classic Stefania Erecta here in the glass dome. She has grown quite a lot. Just look at this little beauty. I really made it a goal to get even more cortex plants and become a mother of potatoes eventually. Biggest inspiration here is definitely Messy Dreams of a Cactus. She is an artist, but she has also a really beautiful planty Instagram page, so check that out. Moving on to number 20 of my list. It's two plants that are really similar in my opinion. So one is the Adenia stilosa and the other one is the Adenia epigea. Yes, epigea. Both aren't really readily available here in Germany so far. I only found a few seeds on Etsy, but I don't know how quick these can grow. So I would prefer buying one that already has like a thick stem and some planty stuff going on. I guess I will just have to keep an eye out for it from now on. Next up we have the Dioscorea elephantipis. So this is a classic. I think it's really obtainable here in Germany. I would say reasonably priced as well. I also have listed the Stefania Suberosa to enlarge my collection, as well as the Dioscorea discolor, which I think is absolutely stunning. It has this velvety, look and it's very unique. 24 on our list is again a kind of a joke or maybe a wish. I mean it is a wish list, right? The Stefania Erecta Variegata. I just assumed that it's really hard to get and also really pricey so I didn't even look um, but this would be really cool as well. Don't worry we are nearing the end so next on my list are Hupertias. What is the correct plural of Hupertias? I already own a one Hupertia nummularifolia and I am mad in love with it. It's beautiful. I just love the look of tassel ferns in general. So I also wrote down the Hupertia Göbli and the Hupertia carinata. I know there are many, many more and these plants are not particularly hyped up. So they are not available like in every plant shop, but you can find them. Last but not least, I have listed some ferns. Ferns were truly the first family of plants that spoke to me that I was interested in. Especially cool are staghorn ferns of all kinds. I just feel like these plants are very aesthetically pleasing, especially if you 
mount them onto some cork or wood or maybe if you make some kokedamas with them. To just mention one of those stag horns that really caught my attention, it's the Platycerium vilinski. It's absolutely beautiful, it's really pale in color and it's an absolute piece of art. So far I have only ever seen like those Instagram pictures with like some sort of Asian caption so I don't even know if they are available here in Europe. I'll have to check. And with this ladies and gentlemen I want to end my little list. Obviously this list is very long and if you have seen my apartment you know that there is not much more space to grow plants effectively. I mean with a few more additional grow lights here and there there might be a few more options. Hmm. You know what I mean. I'm pretty much limited with the amount of plants that I buy. To be honest, I'm not even sure if I would be qualified to care properly for those plants at this moment right now. With only four years of plant care under my belt, I have so much more stuff to learn and I also have so much more time to build my plant collection even more. I still have a full lifetime ahead of me to do that. There's absolutely no need to rush anything. But before I get too philosophical right here, please, 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 please send me your wishlist plants. Doesn't matter if common or rare, variegated or weird, I'm always open for even more inspiration. Here is my full houseplant tour for maximum plant content. I'll see you next time. Until then, enjoy your plants and goodbye.